hello <laughs> good day to you all wherever you're tuning in from um good morning to or sorry i should say good day to paul and gloria and david and justine um colleen is cooking for me today wonderful wonderful uh david said good morning good morning good morning um so we are here for another live recipe again today um so and today's a really 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 yummy one it's cheese, cheese and onion. <laughs> Call me that crisps. Actually, let me see if I can do this right. Cheese, uh, sorry, cheese and onion courgette crisps. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, Justine said, um, hey, who's brownies under the rainbow today? No one's browning. No one's browning. That was just a special one for you, Justine, <laughs> I'm afraid, yesterday. Um, nobody else is getting direction on it. So, um, but Justine is referring to our brownies that we're all going to be making on the 100th show. So the 100th show in a row will be on the 2nd of July, and we want all of you guys cooking along as much as possible, but... Um, to give you guys like some freedom and some creativity and to bring out that inner child that I know is still there, uh, we are going to get you guys to decorate your brownies in whatever vibrant, colourful way you want to decorate them in. Absolutely, completely up to you. Um, so you can have like a lot of fun, a lot of fun with that. So Justine also said that Joss is cooking along too. Okay, so are you like out at work? And Joss is doing all the cooking and then you're just going to go home after work and eat it. Good plan. Good plan. Uh, Denise, uh, greetings. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Justine, hello, everybody. I'm the world's greatest crisp eater. Now, that is quite, <laughs> that is quite a, a label to give yourself. Um, David said, finally, something easy I can make. It is, it is really easy, but we've shared quite a few easiest things. Um, maybe don't go for the, uh, the cheesecake. The baked cheesecake uh, if you want something easy because that was probably the most difficult one that um, I've shared with you guys yet. Um, Paul said I thought the 100th show by my calculation was a day earlier than mentioned here at the start. What? Oh my gosh. Okay right so we started on the 24th of March but I think I did that kind of you know those sites that you can go to on the internet where um, you can calculate days from whatever date. I'm pretty sure I did that. I'm pretty sure I did that. Please say that I did that. <laughs> We're gonna have to check it out. We're gonna have to check it out. Uh, Justine said, just for my benefit. Um, yes, the picture was just for your benefit. Okay, but you need to show it at the beginning of the 100th show. Well, I have to get it out and recycling them, won't I? Okay. Um, so Jeff, thank you for joining from the other room. And he is shared, <laughs> shared a link to the Russell's cheese and onions. Um, so we are making cheese and onion courgette crisps today. Um, for anybody who is not in the UK, cheese and onion crisps in the UK are quite a thing. They are quite a thing. Um, but, uh, but, um, maybe in some other countries you don't get them, or maybe it isn't like such a big thing, because crisp flavours, they differ from country to country. Um, so like the first time I went to, uh, I went to Spain and I discovered paprika crisps, which are amazing, but we don't get them in the UK. We don't get them in the UK. I mean, maybe now we do, because crisps have come a long way in the last like 10 years. Um, you know, before that it was just kind of like your bog standard, I don't know, five? five or six flavours, and one of those was really salted, which isn't really flavour. Um, okay, so, uh, Justine says, I mean the actual brownie I make, I have to get some practice in. Um, but the thing is, sorry, Justine, is that the idea of doing the cook-along is that we make it for the first time together, so you're not allowed to practice, that would be cheating, that would be cheating. Okay, so, uh, if somebody can quickly go onto one of those websites where we calculate days and calc it was it was the 24th of March we started I'm pretty sure it was 24th of March the 1st of July would be 99 days since the first show but what since the first show but the hundredth show I don't I don't understand that am I being am I being a bit silly 
think they're gonna be a bit silly. Anyway, let's get on to today's recipe. So as I said, cheese and onion courgette crisps, but I'm gonna tell you some other um, flavors that you can put on them and how to use those flavors as well. Because otherwise, the show would be incredibly short. Incredibly short. If any of you guys are cooking along at home, set your ovens to um, between 50 to 80 degrees center, uh, Celsius or 120 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, uh, Justine, I think you're lying, by the way. Don't, don't, you can't fool me. You can't fool me. I know you just want it to be on your day off. You do just want it to be on your day off. Um, so <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of this by the end of the show, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. Anyway, this is just carrying on the theme of mayhem, which is essentially what this show is all about. <laughs> it's like slightly organized, vaguely planned mayhem, essentially, that's what we're going for. So I'm glad that you could be along with us for the ride. Just says, internet says, 100 days from the 24th of March to the 2nd of July, phew. Thank gosh for that. Thank gosh for that. See, I'm really being careful with my swearing these days. I said gosh. Okay. Being super careful. Just pretending that there are like actual kids around. Um, okay. Oh, and now Connie says, I think Paul is right. July 1st is 100. Oh, blimey. <laughs> okay. You guys can bet all that out. Figure it out for me. I'm going to get on with making courgette um, crisps with cheese and onion flavouring. Okay, so, um, of course, we've got our courgette here. Um, it depends on how big your courgette is. This one is fairly small. Um, so, if yours is, like, twice the size of this, you might need a bit more of the dressing to go on it. Um, and let's bring you over to the overhead cam. Oh, Maggie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Colleen said that we started on the 23rd. Hmm. Are you sure about that? Because when I was looking at our old videos, like the ones like right from the very beginning, it said the 24th of March. Um, but I'll double check. I'll double check. Okay, right. So let's come to the overhead camera. Um, and then we can see our, well, some of our ingredients for today. Um, so these are what we're going to be using today. So um, <laughs> you guys are getting to the bottom of that. Thank you for being my detectives for me. Um, so here we have our onion powder. Um, so we're gonna be using one teaspoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of nutritional yeast, um, two, sorry, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, just for, you know, some extra flavor, and um, a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so. But what you can do is you can always um, add more of the nutritional yeast if you want to, if you want it to be cheesier. And one other thing that you can do is you can always grind this so it's more of a fine powder if you want to. If you want to. You don't have to, uh, but I've known some people to do that. Um, and of course with the salt you can add um, more... Um, more salt if you if you want to um, and also when we're making this dressing you know if it is a bit too thick then we could always add a bit more oil if we want to and that's why I just got like a bit of oil on standby should we need it okay so but I wanted to take you through these other ingredients that we've got here good morning good morning Karen thank you for joining us thank you for joining us um, okay, and Lisa says, uh, good morning from the States, going to an outdoor restaurant tonight that has courgette chips, which I was going to order. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so, uh, this is what the courgette chips will look like in the end. Um, so, they do crisp up really, really nicely, really, really nicely, and they've got this lovely flat surface, which I, I really like. So, it's more about the, the flavour, whereas with something like kale chips, I think it's equally about that kind of like um, scrunched up crunchiness and that texture and that sound that's in your mouth, which is really, really delightful. With courgette crisps, obviously, like it's a bit different, but we have a really, really lovely flat surface. Um, so you get loads of that flavour, really, really loads of that flavour. So let me just take you through what are the other options that we have. And these are just a few that I got from my cupboard. Um, so, you know, there's way more that you can do than, uh, than what I've got here. Um, but, uh, so here we also have garlic powder and garlic granules. Um, so garlic powder is a really, really useful ingredient to get if you are into raw food. Really, really good 
um, really, really good uh, ingredient to use in raw food um, rather than using uh, raw garlic because it can be a bit strong. It can um, also kind of repeat on you quite a lot. Okay, David says I seem to be running out of olive oil. Tim, I've actually got like a massive, um, one of those massive tins of it. So don't worry, don't panic. Um, but one thing to say about garlic powder and garlic granules is we tend to go for powder when we're making something like this because as the name suggests, it is nice and fine. And so it's gonna be really easy to disperse over um, our courgette. Whereas with the garlic, granules um you know they're a bit bigger they are a bit bigger so you do just have to take that into consideration but these garlic granules are actually they're fairly small they're fairly small so it shouldn't make too much difference but sometimes you can get them bigger than this and i'll show you what i mean by this because today you know i'm using our onion powder which is there we go nice and fine really really fine as the name would suggest it's powder but the granules that I've got, sorry, there we go. The granules that I've got are really quite big, really quite big. So in this recipe, they wouldn't work. They wouldn't work, they're far too big. You could grind them, definitely. You could grind them, um, spice grinder, um, maybe even a pestle and mortar. I haven't tried it. I don't know how tough they are in pestle and mortar, but they might be okay. Uh, but if you do have something like um, garlic, uh, garlic or onion granules that are this big, then, um, you know, you can potentially use them for a recipe like this, but you might just need to grind them. Um, so, okay. Um, so, Colleen, impressively, and, and I think we, by the way, um, uh, Colleen has already guessed what is underneath the rainbow. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, but I'm so impressed because Colleen said that she checked her notes. She made notes. That's really cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Thank you for that. And she does confirm that the first show is on the 24th. So the 100th show is on the 2nd of July. <sighs> Panic over. Panic over. And she also guesses at what is underneath a rainbow. Um, and she is right in that it is Nikki being a chef in France. There we go. So she's house sitting, but she also has to do like some food while she's out there. And so that's her happy in France. See her lovely long hair. There we go. So very, very proud of Nikki. Uh, and can't wait to have her teaching you guys again. She's just such a wonderful teacher, honestly. Like she is an absolute born teacher. Um, Justine asked, what was the first recipe that I shared on these lives? <laughs> oh, now okay right now there's more confusion because colleen says now the july the first is 100 oh my gosh i can't i can't keep up with this okay right justine said what was the first recipe so the first recipe was um it was one pot dishes that was it that was it so it wasn't really a recipe it was basically kind of like giving you guidance as to how to make one pot, pot dish which is basically so you chop up a load of stuff you pop it in a pan you put some water on it and then you simmer it and that's it and that's a whole meal so right there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, back to our different ingredients today. Okay. So I've just mentioned the onion and garlic granules uh, that we have versus the powder. And of course we have paprika, which would be a really, really good addition. Addition. Um, to crisps. Uh, the colour is going to look really, really brilliant with um, paprika. Definitely, definitely. Um, and sumac. So I wanted to show you this because actually sumac it gives crisps a flavour like prawn cocktail. Um, so I don't know if everybody in the room is familiar with prawn cocktail crisps because I feel like they might just be like a UK only thing. Um, prawn cocktail like was really, really popular in the 70s in the UK and now we have prawn cocktail crisps which don't really taste like prawn. So I'm told, I don't actually know what prawn tastes like, um, <clears throat> but they're quite, um, the flavour of prawn cocktail crisps is quite kind of a bit spicy um, and a bit sour. Um, so sumac is a really, really good um, replica for that. <clears throat> um, and then we have our spice mixes. So this is a spice mix that I made the other day when we made our black bean stew. 
a black bean stew. So if you've made a spice mix like this already, then it would be great for courgette crisps or kale chips or cavalanero chips. So if you haven't tried them yet, cavalanero chips, you treat them in the same way that you would with kale chips and courgette crisps. Um, and they're lovely because they have like bumps over them as well. Cavalanero is really, really lovely, but you do need to take the leaf off from the stem. Um, so just remove that stem because it is, it's far too, it's far too tough. Lou, Lou, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to quite a, quite a crazy, crazy fun one. We're just discussing when the actual 100th show is. So <laughs> I fear I may have got it wrong. I may have got it wrong, but I know all you guys will forgive me. So it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, Dennis says they were my favorite crisps in the 80s alongside salt and vinegar. Yeah, prawn cocktail crisps are a special, special thing. Um, but yes, do get yourself some sumac and try that out. Um, I think that with prawn cocktail crisps, it's got like maybe a slightly tomato thing going on as well. Um, so, you know, just like a bit of like double concentrated tomato paste in this mix that you that you would uh, add to your courgette crisp would probably work really, really well. Um, uh, yeah, so any spice mix that you've made, uh, let's say savoury spice mix, um, would be a really, really good addition. Um, and equally, you know, I've got my za'atar. Za'atar is really, really lovely um, on any kind of chips and for a really fancy, like, dinner party version of veg chips, or veg crisps, um, try using vine leaves. Vine leaves with um, olive oil and za'atar on them and then dehydrated, you know, baked on a very, very low heat in the oven are absolutely delicious. And of course they look beautiful, really, really beautiful. But you just want to chop that little stem off the end of the vine leaves because that can be quite tough. But it works very well, the vine leaves with the za'atar, because, um, you know, they're used in uh, the same part of the world. So, you know, the flavours go, go together really, really well. Um, Oliver, thank you for joining us as well. And Louise says, 100th show, amazing. Yeah, we might it actually make it to 101 by the sounds of it. <laughs> so, um, oh, Denise says, just wanted to let you know that she was in contact with Khan yesterday um, and he's fine, um, but he, uh, a relative of his has passed away. Uh, oh no, sorry. Sorry, I read that wrong. A relative of his has, has COVID, so naturally Khan is upset and concerned. So sending all of our love um, out to you, Khan. You might watch this at a later date. So uh, we're always here for a good chat about vegan food and, you know, to cheer you up and um, take your mind off things if that's what you want. I think it's been a really, really good place um, to do that uh, for everyone. So, um, yes, so uh, we've got our spice mixes here, and of course we have our, um, our cashews. So, cashews have often been used in something like kale chips, so usually you make a cream, uh, put, you know, one of these or a few of these, like, yummy flavours in it, um, and then massage that cream into, you know, the kale chips or the cavalanero or whatever. But actually, in this recipe, we're not going to use these at all. Um, we don't necessarily need them, although it is a really lovely addition because it's got that creaminess to it. Um, and it means that um, the fat from this helps um, all of those flavours stick to the veggies. And that's what we want. We need all of these flavours to stick to the veggies. So we need some sort of moistness in it. Um, we wouldn't be able to just use the spices or the powders on their own and expect them to stick to the veggies. Because even while they're wet, they might stick. Um, but then later on when you, know, when you put stuff in the oven, uh, it will start to fall off. It won't actually stick. Um, and we need it to really, really stick. Okay, so Colleen said, She's trying to make, make me understand this, and I'm really struggling today. Really struggling. <laughs> so, Colleen said, technically, you delivered the blueprint for the one pot dish and posted the actual recipe later in the notes. I like your thinking. So, July 2nd will be the 100th live cook along. <laughs> That's like some lawyery nonsense like getting around the actual rules i love it i love it i love it okay so let's get on to making our courgette chips and so with our courgette chips we can decide what shape we want them um uh, by how we cut them um so either we can do them this way which means that we'll get 
you know, nice rounds like that, or we can do them off to an angle like this, which means that they will be a lot longer. So I made some earlier, um, and you can see I did them this elongated way, okay? And the thing is, so with courgette, is that they will shrink um, in the oven. They will shrink. Um, so, you know, things like kale chips won't necessarily shrink, but because courgette has water content in it, it will shrink. So we do need to think about that when, whenever we bake them. Um, and that is why I had specified the, the thickness of it. Um, because it's very, very tempting, especially when you've got something like this mandolin, to make them very, 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 very fine, very thin. Um, but the problem with that is that they will disintegrate and they will be paper thin. They will be paper thin. Um, and then that isn't too pleasant to eat. Um, I, don't, I don't like it as much. I want like a bit of body to this. I want, I want to be able to kind of like feel it in my mouth basically. But, and we have done this on the course actually, uh, where students have made them very, very thin and, and fully round, fully round like this. So not elongated like this. And then actually use them on top of a dish and made a lovely little flower. Um, and so if you're going to do something like that and use them as decoration for something, actually them being fine is, is, is actually completely okay. But if you want them to be like crisps, then we want them to be a little, <laughs> um, a little thicker. Uh, I'm glad that you liked, you liked my, um, my lawyer analogy. I've been watching the good fight far too much. <laughs> Um, Bruna and Tanya, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Okay, so I've got my mandolin here, guys. Um, do be careful with a mandolin. It is incredibly sharp, and many a chef have lost parts of their fingers um, on these things. So be really, really careful. If in doubt, use a knife. Use a knife. Um, so with my mandolin, I've got this little screw underneath, and what that does is it makes this bit be able to go back further. So this will dictate how thick our, our courgette pieces are going to be. And whenever I have finished using it, before I put it in the washing up, I always make sure that this is all of the way down. And because it's all of the way down, it means that this is in front of the blade and it means that nobody is gonna be able to cut their finger on it. Um, so if you ever do that, if you ever use a mandolin, then always get into the habit of doing this um, because it will it will really, really help you to keep all of your fingers intact. Right. OK, so as I said, we can dictate what shape our, um, our courgette uh, chips are going to be. So I'm going to, again, make them quite elongated, but actually I'm going to go that way. And with my mandolin, I have it against the board on this edge, and this edge is up, just using that board um, as a form of resistance. Sometimes, in fact, I'll bring you guys over here so that you can see more. <clears throat> so, uh, sometimes I see people using mandolins and then using them like in midair. <laughs> You're doing that. No, 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 we don't want to do that. And the same for when we use our microplane as well. You remember um, when you see me using my microplane, I always stipulate that. You know, you need it down, you need one edge down on the board so you've got some form of resistance and that means that it's just not going to um, be jiggling about all over the place. Um, and this side up. And so these are, yeah, probably about three mil. Three mil, between two and three mil. I'm not going to get my roller out. Okay, and as we're using the mandolin, you know, we, we're using a, a courgette on it. So if you're gonna use anything, um, if you're gonna start using mandolin, it's good to start with something like a courgette because your fingers are quite nicely away from the blade. Um, so it's a good, easy one to start with. And also it's quite soft. So it actually um, cuts really, really, really well. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But as your um, uh, mandolin, mandolining, is that even a word? If it is a word, it's hard to say. Um, then, uh, oh, Annie! Annie, I was wondering where you were. Hope you're okay. Hope you're okay. 
Uh, Justine says, Joss is using my mandolin. I always thought it was a musical instrument. It is, it is, it's both, it's both. Um, so when we are um, cutting our, our courgette with our mandolin, um, then of course, you know, you'll start with your hand further down and then just be mindful of, you know, at some point you want to move your hand further back. So don't just kind of like go for it, is what I'm saying, okay? Just be aware of where your hands and fingers are. And again, see, moving my fingers out of the way. And just being a bit slower as well when it gets to this point because I know that I am getting close to it. There we go. And we're just gonna let that bit go, okay? Don't keep going trying to get every little bit of courgette out of this, please, if you're using a mandolin. And as I said, turning this screw so that now it's completely safe and now I can pop it in the thing. Okay, so we've got our courgette all cut up and there we go. Okay, so now we can make our dressing. So we just need to pop our, um, our ingredients into, actually I'll put them into here first. So we've got our onion powder. Our nutritional yeast, our salt. Oh, Annie says, I wanted to see you using the mandolin as I bought one for the Pro Chef course. Good, good, good. I'm really, really glad. And actually, Annie, don't worry because on the course, um, you'll be given videos of me using the mandolin. Um, so, yeah, because I really want to make sure that nobody has any accidents um, with the mandolin. Um, so you will be given some really good guidance um, during the course. Um, and then we'll just add our oil. So we might need to add a little bit more oil to this because we do want to make sure that it's not too thick. Oh, there we go. That's not... Actually, I'll just, uh, I'll just have a touch. Just that I'm amazed I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> I'm very, very glad that you didn't. I'm very glad that you didn't. Oh, Catherine! Catherine, welcome, welcome. Sorry, um, family, uh, family visitors from abroad. Okay, okay. And Anna, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Paul said, if I ate a chocolate brownie yesterday at noon and also today at noon, it would be the second chocolate brownie I ate for only one day since I ate the first chocolate brownie. I'm gathering that we're still talking about when is the actual 100th show. <laughs> Okay, right, so we need um, a good size bowl for our courgettes to go in, and then we just need to pop our dressing into it. And now we're gonna get our hands involved. So your hands are gonna get messy, guys. Um, there are some things that we just, we need to get our hands involved in it with food. But you know, it's olive oil, it's good for the skin. Anna says, this looks fab, so glad I caught it. Oh, I'm glad you could make it. I'm really glad you could make it. So I am just mixing these around and you can be fairly rough with them. I mean, that's one, one of the benefits of us um, cutting them to three mil, you know, they're not just going to kind of break apart. Um, if they were thinner, then they might break apart, but these are doing really, really well. Because you don't want to sit there for hours just like pasting the dressing onto each one. No, 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 that's, that's really boring. We don't want to do that. I don't have time to do things like that. You'll have noticed with a lot of my cooking, I'm like, no, life's too short. Let's let's just cut some corners. But honestly, in a lot of professional kitchens, that's what life is like. Because like you don't have time. You don't have much time. You're always short staffed. Um, so you know you come up with ways of doing things quite quickly. There we go. But they're great tips to pass on to people who don't have much time to cook. Okay, so now these are all covered, so I can just pop them onto my tray, and I've made sure that I've got a nice wide tray here, okay? Really nice tray, uh, re really big tray. Um, uh, Annie said, are you speaking? I seem to, no, 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 I am definitely speaking. <laughs> um, and the sound, I think, has been okay for everybody else. Um, Anna said, is onion powder easy to get? So where, it depends where, are you, where you are, Anna, actually. Um, 
So if you can tell me where you are, because if you're in the UK, then I can definitely advise you about different places. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I've got a, a really nice wide tray here. We don't want these to overlap at all. A lot of space in between them. So once we have put these all out on the baking tray, then we can bake them for around um, an hour and a half. Um, something like that, but it's difficult to say exact because um, you know your courgette crisps they might be slightly thinner, they might be slightly thicker um, than mine, um, and it depends on how much of a rush you're in. So if you're not in a rush at all, then uh, you can bake them at 50 degrees, and they'll take a bit longer. If you are in more of a rush, then you can bring it up um, to 80 degrees Celsius. That's absolutely fine, or even up to 100 even up to 100, that's absolutely fine. Oh, Anna says that she's in South of London. Okay, super easy, super easy then. Um, because um, there are so many different food stores that sell onion powder. So not just, not just health food stores, not just health food stores. Um, I have found um, onion powder in, um, in food stores around London, like you know, there's um, like you just go down high street and here we go, hey, there you are, there you are. Um, you just go down high streets in London, and you know, there'll be um, like a kind of news agent type place that sells a bit of veg, um, that might have you know, food from like Eastern Europe, you know, like the, the jars of uh, beans, which by the way are amazing, um, and you know, some, some spices and stuff like that. And quite often you'll find things like onion and garlic powder in those shops. Um, so do check them out. Um, but of course you can get them in health food shops. You can get them in health food shops. Um, and I think there are some amazing health food shops in South London, um, really, really good ones. Um, oh, <laughs> Anna, Anna is actually in Wimbledon. That's great, that's great. Um, and uh, and so Denise was from Wimbledon as well. I actually lived in Richmond uh, for a year. And Maggie, I don't know if she's still in the room, but she actually has a vegan cafe in Richmond. And of course in Richmond there is the Whole Foods, there is the Whole Foods there. So you could, I'm pretty sure that you could get it from the Whole Foods in Richmond. Um, but as I said, there are loads of shops, like I mentioned, that are kind of like news agents that sell uh, fruit and veg in London and they sell lots of different kind of like spices and um, kind of like more unusual things as well. I even managed to bag some, uh, some garlic and onion powder at a post office in London, would you believe? Actually in Kingston, in Kingston, uh, which um, to the people who are in Wimbledon or were in Wimbledon, you would know Kingston, which is a tiny place, tiny, tiny place. Um, anyway, uh, oh, Sharon says that she can hardly hear me. I think everyone's okay, else is okay. So I think that, that that might be something to do with your um, your phone or whatever you're watching on. Uh, Colleen said, I'm gonna put some in the oven and some in the air fryer. That's a really, really great idea. Please do let me know how you get on with that. Um, Uh, sorry, I'm just reading the comments. Uh, something about cleaning the actual tray, unless I really have to. <gasps> yes, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, so Oliver, there we go. Can I use baking paper? No, no. With this one, you cannot. And I've mentioned uh, this before, which is that there are some things that we cook, that we bake, that we kind of roast, that type of thing, where we really need that high heat that is going to be coming from the pan. Uh, and so let me just take this over into the oven and I'll show you the ones that I made earlier. Okay, so these are the ones that I made earlier. Um, and um, because the oil really, really, really needs that intense, that intense heat that it's going to get from the pan, um, it needs to be touching it. So when these are cooking you will get to a point where they've started to brown like these ones have um but they still don't feel that crisp like they've just started to crisp up but you move one and it isn't it isn't so solid um but you can take it out you can take it out at that point because once it cools down they will crisp up they will crisp up so that's just kind of like one word of warning and these have crisped up really, really nicely. Really nice. Oh, wow. 
Right, so let me bring you guys over here. There we go. And you can see these have actually shrank quite a lot because they were the same size. Those the same size as the ones that I've just um, put in the oven. So they have shrank quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, so you can, of course, you know, make loads more than this because these are going to last like five minutes in my house. Not even that. I think I might just eat them now. Anyway, right. Sorry. Um, uh, Justine says that uh, Joss lives in Richmond. Oh wow, small world, small world. Uh, Denise says I am amazed, gobsmacked, even, and we're already friends. This makes my day, Chef Joe. Ah, no problem, no problem. Oh, so Denise went to um KCFE. So is that the Kingston something something something? Uh, Anna says, I've got lots of ethnic shops close by. Um, how fab more SW neighbours. It's a really lovely part of the world. Really lovely. Um, Colleen says, onion powder is very common in the US. That's great. That's great. Um, in the UK, at the moment, you can't get it in supermarkets so much. But um, it's amazing that we're getting these more kind of like, um, like diverse uh, food shops um, around the country. Uh, Paul says, my second cousin wants removed will nightingales oh right okay so my second cousin once removed will nightingale uh was captain of wimbledon <laughs> oh my gosh we've got like so many different connections here so many different connections here so i'm just reading all of your comments comments louise says apologies if you've already covered this could you use a speed peeler if you haven't got a mandolin um a speed peeler so yes you could you could you just need to make sure that the courgette is around like two, between two and three mil. If it's any less than that, they will be far too thin because once the water all goes from them, um, they kind of shrink, basically, they shrink. Um, okay, so Oliver says, oh, I feared it. But the thing is, right, with a pan like this, um, I mean, it's not it's not that messy. It's not as messy as our, um, was it yesterday we did the potato? We did the sweet and sour potato, or was it the day before? Sorry, I'm losing my days here, honestly. Honestly, that's my excuse for not knowing when the 100th show was. <laughs> um, Colleen says, don't we have to flip them midway? No, with these ones you don't. With these ones you don't, it's absolutely fine, you don't need to. I didn't I didn't with these ones, so it's absolutely fine. Um, uh, Joss says, yummy, hand smell of cheese and onion walker crisps. Yes, your whole house will smell of cheese and onion walker crisps. Uh, Deborah says, I missed how long to bake them for. Um, so I actually put these on at 11. So I cook them for around like an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. And they were on about 80 degrees, 80 degrees, um, so, sorry, Celsius. But you do have to keep an eye on them because there is no absolute time um, that I can tell you. You know, it's not like when we're baking a cake and we're specifying, you know, what size tin you have and you know that type of thing then we can give you kind of like more of a ballpark whereas with this it's a bit different it's a bit different because your courgette crisps might be a bit thinner they might be a bit thicker than mine your courgette may have been wider than mine mine was quite slim um so you do have to factor that in um so you know we can give you this guidance of you know say like an hour and a half to two hours um obviously like the higher you put it on the quicker it will bake you just want to make sure that it doesn't burn it doesn't burn that's really the main key and then it's a matter of like knowing what they should look like and knowing what the texture of them should be so you should be baking them until they get this nice lovely golden uh, quite a deep golden brown color um and when you when you try moving one around um it's how can i say it like it's not completely crisp there will be some parts of it that will be crisp and there will be some parts of it that aren't crisp yet um, and so you can bring them out of the oven then and then as they cool down all of it will become crisp um so yeah okay um Catherine says, do you need to oil the bacon tray? No, you don't because you've got um, oil in the dressing already. So that is plenty of oil, absolutely plenty of oil. Um, and da, da, da. 
Oh, Kingston College of Further Education, of course. Oh, sorry. I was only there for a year, so I didn't I didn't know too many of those places around there, apart from like Maggie's Maggie's uh, cafe. I knew that very well, very very well. Um, Colleen said, "Oh, I can't wait that long. I have to go to work." <laughs> oh no, this is a long one. This is a long one. So, if you are short on time, you can up the temperature a bit, but you have to be really really careful because what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, we're trying to dry them out, crisp them up. Uh, get all that flavour to stick to them, but we don't want to burn them, okay? So, you know, you can raise the temperature a bit, but you just need to be really, really careful that you don't burn them, because obviously that bit of flavour is going to affect the crisps. Okay, guys, so any more questions? Any more questions? So, okay, right. So here are, again, quick quick look at our lovely courgette crisps and what they should look like in the end so we've got this nice lovely as i said deep golden color you know it's not floppy it's uh crisp that is what we are looking for so, mm. so loads of flavor Absol sorry absolutely loads of flavor so guys thank you thank you thank you for joining me again today it's been so much fun and a really 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 good laugh um, so I'm sorry if I'm not that organised and I don't really know when the hundredth show is, but I know that you won't mind. <laughs> I know that you won't mind. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out together. Okay. So, uh, join me again, uh, tomorrow where I think I might make like an aubergine dish. Aubergine or something sour. Aubergine crisp. Don't know. Don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I will do my best to share the ingredients uh list with you later so that if you want to click along you've got a bit more notice um so thank you thank you thank you for all of your love and laughter um and please do share pictures of the courgette crisps that you make if you make them i would always 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 love to see that so um uh yeah thank you thank you so much uh for a really really fun show and as always as always you know what i'm gonna say have a lovely day